got to talk. You're getting up in years, and we need to know what you want done with your savings and the untimely nature of your debt. And he said, Ms. McCartney, do you even know how much money you have saved in more than 80 years? She said, no, tell me. He said, about a quarter of a million dollars. She said, I have? Yes. He said, I'll tell you what. Come by my bank next week, and we'll talk about this. The following week comes. He goes down, she goes down there, and there's the banker, greets her at the door, walks her into his office. He has 10 dimes on his desk. Says, Ms. McCarty, each dime is going to represent 10% of your savings. When I point to a dime, point to a dime, you tell me what you want to tell me. Points to the first dime. Says, I want you to give this to my church. I love my pastor, I love my church members. I've gone on the glory, I don't want them to walk for anything. 10% gone. He points to the next two dollars. She said, well, I've never been married, never had any children, never raised any children, but I have two nephews. And once I'm gone, I don't want them to struggle. Make sure they get 20% of them. Then he said, what about the following seven dollars? She said, I know exactly what I want done with this money. Do you do? Yes. I want you to take my money, send it to the University of Southern Mississippi, start a scholarship in my name for worthy and deserving black college students who still possess the ability to dream. To dream. And I spent about six hours with her, and you talk about true humility. True humility. I'm asking her every question on wealth. I just want to know the mindset of this woman. And she just sat in her rocking chair, rocking back and forth, holding that old beat up, tattered, covered Bible, scotch tape to keep the Corinthians from falling. Well, there's a writer, the Mississippi Clarion. He's writing an article on her. And he says to her, he says, Ms. McCarty, you've enabled the dreams of so many. I have a dream. And she said, yes, I do have a dream. So share it with our readers. What is your dream? She said, I don't know if the Lord's going to let me do it, live long enough to see it, but I just hope I live long enough to see the first benefactor of my money walk across that stage and receive his ability. About three months later, Oscar McCarty sits in the front row at commencement at the University of Southern Mississippi and sees little Stephanie Bullock, a business student, there he is right there. Little Stephanie <coughs> Bullock, a businessman. She's on the next slide. Walk across that stage. There she is. Oh, you go back. Okay. Walk across that stage and receive her degree. Less than 90 days later, Asa McCarty makes a transition. That same writer hunts down Stephanie Bullock and says, you know, you've been a picture of she's done on the glory. And he, any words for our readers? She says, yes, I do have a word. I said, what's that? It says, heaven couldn't have gained a better agent. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with you entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs solve problems. You want to be an entrepreneur? Solve problems. Ask me all the time. If we give you a million dollars, what problem do you solve? <coughs> if I give you a billion dollars, what problem would you solve? What are you going to place your fingerprints on life? Don't be down, leave your fingerprints and prove you were here. Entrepreneurs are difference makers. Yeah, I'm glad you got the word with all some of you in this room right now. Well, don't do grand things. But all I want to know, are you going to make a difference? That's all I want to know. It is critically important at this particular time and place. Why? Here it is, Think and Grow Rich, a black choice came out in 1991. And then look at this book, Herman Russell. What will the grandest story do you need? And I told Mr. Russell this, and I gotta share it, because you don't even, Jerome, do you even know, take a millionaire to lunch, your father called at the last minute and couldn't make it, but he said, bring my class here. Did I ever share that with you? No. Yeah. These, these two gentlemen know my last class is always take a millionaire to lunch. I bring a certified millionaire to speak to my kids. One year, Mr. Russell said, yes, I would love to do it. And I made the arrangements. He's coming over to the B school. I get him get the lunch and this and everything. And last minute, he said, oh, man, no, no, man, please don't be angry. No, no, no problem at all. 
I mean, we got an important meeting, blah, 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 and I just can't get there and, and, and quick them up. I said, we, we, we can reschedule a call then, and no problem another time. And then hung up the phone, and then I got a call back, and he says, I just got an idea. CAU is pretty close, and your students mind coming right up here to the muscle building. And we did. And we were in a huge room, huge table, mahogany table in there, and my students came in there, and don't you know, your father served my students. You father served my students lunch. And I asked my students, imagine how many deals have been cut at this table. <laughs> they were in awe. They were just in shock to see the man himself come over here and just. Somebody said it couldn't be done, but he would have chuckled and replied that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say it till he tried. So he buckled right in with the face of a grin on his face. If you worry, he did it. He started to send his attack over there. That couldn't be done anymore. Somebody scoffed, told me you'll never do that. At least no one, ever, no one has ever done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat and the first thing you know, he put on it. With a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin without any doubting or quit. He started to sing as he tapped it. It couldn't be done. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy failure. There are thousands ready to point out to you one by one the dangers that went to the sale. But with a lift of your chin and a bit of your grin, you just take off your coat and go to it. You start in the same as you tackle the thing. And I can give you 50 million different examples. 50 million different examples. Tell the man he can't preach, he becomes T.D. Jakes. And they told him he couldn't preach. <laughs> Tell us she couldn't lead, and she becomes Oprah Winfrey. Put him in a prison cell, throw away the key. You got two choices. You got Malcolm X, you got Nelson Mandela. Tell that man you will never see freedom in your lifetime. Come on, who's gay? So, whatever excuse you have right now, and what's the definition of an excuse? Any reason for inactivity. You can make money, you can make excuses. Baby girl, you can't do it. Oh,